Hello and welcome to PowerShell Weekly, a series where we cover a few minutes of PowerShell every week. In this first episode, we're going to look at an introduction to PowerShell. PowerShell is built on .NET and is both a command line shell and quite a competent scripting language. Just like with .NET, we have two editions available. We have the old Windows PowerShell based on .NET framework, and we have the newer Yes PowerShell that is built on .NET Core, or what is now known as .NET 5. Let's have a look at the differences. Let's start with Windows PowerShell. Windows PowerShell is built on .NET Framework. It was released in version 5.1 in August of 2016, about five years ago. It works on Windows only, and it comes included in Windows. There is nothing to install, it's just there. Although, if you run an older version than version 5.1, you really should consider updating. PowerShell, on the other hand, is built on .NET 5. It was last released in August of 2021 in version 7.1.4. That's about a month ago. PowerShell runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And you can install it by going to aka.ms slash PowerShell. You can run both Windows PowerShell and PowerShell side by side. So if you haven't tried PowerShell 7 yet, I strongly encourage you to go to eka.ms slash PowerShell and download it right away. Let's have a look at a few commands. Here I am in Windows Terminal running PowerShell 7. PowerShell commands are sometimes referred to as commandlets and sometimes as functions. For now, we're not going to make a difference. We're just going to call them commands. PowerShell commands are by convention, named by a verb, a dash, and a noun. So for instance, if I want to get all the services on my computers, I would do get dash service. And that lists all the services. If I were to list all the items in my current location, I would do get dash child item. And that would list the, file, the files in my current folder. If I would like to list processes, I would do, yeah, you guessed it, get process. And that lists all the processes running on my current computer. Just running commands without giving them any input isn't that useful. Let's clear my screen and see if we can find a process named notepad. So we're going to use get process again. And this time we want to give some input to the command get process. And in PowerShell, we do this by using parameters. And parameters always starts with a dash, or actually parameter names always start with a dash. So if I do dash, I can either tab here to go through all the available parameters, or I can type a dash and hit control space. If I do that, I will get the menu with all the available parameters. I can use the arrow keys to navigate around this menu, and I can decide that I want to use the parameter name. I hit space, and then I give it a name, notepad. I have one notepad process running on this machine. What if I want to stop it? Yeah, it's that simple. I can do stop process dash name notepad. As you can see, now I used a lowercase p. So PowerShell does not care about case sensitivity in command names. It actually doesn't care about case sensitive in most cases. Sometimes when I run interactive PowerShell inside of the terminal, I want to save some time. So for instance, if I want to get, do get process, I can do just get process notepad. Oh yeah, I stopped the process. So it's not there anymore. I wonder if I could start the process. Oh yeah, seems like I can. And now notepad opens up on my other screen. As you can see here, I'm just saying get process notepad and start process notepad.exe. I'm not using any dash name. 
This is called using positional parameter binding. Usually in PowerShell, we give PowerShell a command, dash a parameter name, and then the value of the, for the parameter. But some parameters accept what's called positional values. And that means that PowerShell will automatically figure out that if we just give get process a name of notepad that belongs to the name parameter. How can I know that? There's a help system. So I can do get dash help, give it a name and say, I want help for get process. I'm also going to use the parameter parameter to only get help for a certain parameter. And I'm going to choose parameter star to get all the parameters. If I scroll back up, you can see that I have all the parameters for get process listed. There's a parameter called file version info. It has the description and some metadata. It says it's requ not required. It has named as position. So I can't use positional values. I need to use its name. And it doesn't accept pipeline input and no watercard characters. I have a parameter called ID. I have a parameter called include username. I have an input par input object. I have a module parameter. And here I have the, the parameter name. I get the description of the parameter. It's not required. And here we can see it has position zero. Position zero means that every time PowerShell gets a value that isn't bound to a specific parameter name, then PowerShell is going to try to automatically assign the value to the first free parameter by position. So if I haven't used the, the parameter name, then it will bound it to that parameter. So as we can see, get process notepad works just fine. If I do get process name notepad, and then just say something else. PowerShell says that the positional parameter cannot be found that accepts arguments something else. So here PowerShell gets a positional value but the only positional parameter is already taken or bound by name. So that's taken and PowerShell can not figure out what to do with this something else value. So it will just give us an error. There's also a command called get command and get command gives me a list of commands. So if I just run get command, it will list all the commands available on my computer. I can also say name and for instance, do star dash process. This will list all the process commands on my computer. We can see that I have a debug process, get process, start process, stop process, and wait process. Let's look at get process. So I'm going to get command. This time I'll say name get process. And I'm going to give it another parameter called syntax. Now, this is called a switch parameter. Some parameters don't accept values at all. They're just, if they're there, you turn them on. If the, and if they're not there, they'll be turned off. So I'm going to activate the syntax functionality by using the switch parameter syntax. If you run that, you see, let me zoom out a little bit here to make it easier to read. If I run this, it will print the syntax or the available syntax for the command get process. You can see that we can run get process in six different ways. Each of these ways is called a parameter set. And here we can also see that the first way here, the first parameter set, it has a parameter called name. The name is within brackets here. That means it's a positional parameter. So, and it's, they are in the, um, in the position order. So this means the first position will be name. And if I don't use the parameter name name, it will just take the first unbound value. I can see that the whole name and value here is within brackets. That means that the parameter is not mandatory. It's optional. So I don't need to supply it. And I can see that it takes the value of type string 
and this bracket means that it takes an array of strings so I can give it more than one string. I can for example do get process say pwsh for powershell comma notepad and this will give me both all notepad processes and all powershell processes. Get command with a dash syntax parameter is a really good way to, to have a quick look at how I can run a command. Get command also takes a parameter called module. If I do get command dash name get process, we'll see that, well, we can't see this because it's a bit big. So I'm going to zoom out and we can see that this command belongs to the module Microsoft PowerShell management. If I do get command again and say module and paste Microsoft.PowerShell management into the command line, it will give me all the commands that is available inside of that module. And this is really useful because a lot of the times commands with similar functionality are often grouped into the same module. If I can find one command that makes something that is almost what I want to do, I can probably find what I actually want to do in another command in the same module. Get command is a great way to explore which commands are available in a module. And I can also get information about a specific command. Let's try test path here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit again and say get command name test path syntax. And this gave me the syntax of test path. And that was all for this week. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss the next week where we'll look at PowerShell pipelines. That's a technique to get the output from my one command as input to another command. See you then. Bye-bye.